Hey guys, it is me, Conquest. I've been going for about 10 months. I, I, it's not like I was a big YouTuber or anything, but I stopped making videos, um, and I could save that for a later video. Right now, I just want to talk about demonology and give a quick guide right before the season starts, just in case anyone's struggling with the complexity of it, because with these new talents, it's it can be a little hard to wrap your head around it. So... First off, I'm just going to quickly say if you're not a Void Elf, that's fine. But I just think due to their uh, passive of not taking uh, their drawback from damage, I just think it's incredible for demo with their haste and how much we have to cast. So I would recommend you play Void Elf if you want to feel more smooth playing demo. Uh, but otherwise human, orc, whatever, it's fine. This is just my personal recommendation. So I just want to jump straight into talents, and I want to make this as simple as possible, because these talents are very, very, like, they look complicated, but most of them are passive, so it's not too stressful. The main things that are complicated are this little Amplify Curse here. I, I see a lot of Warlocks don't use utilize that, but it's basically just another defensive if you use it with Curse of Weakness, because you make your enemy not be able to Critical Strike, and you can just make a macro, uh, well, you can make a macro, um, just to be one button, um, because it's, it's not on the global cooldown. Alright, so obviously I will put my loadout in the description or in the comments, but I just want to explain a few things just so you can understand where it is. So, uh, pretty much all these defensive ones are kind of like, they should be kind of obvious. We're warlocks. We kind of need the defensives. Um, the big health stone is very good, along with soul burn. We're just going down to soul burn. These talents suck. I, I don't like them. It's it feels very PVE, um, but that's okay. Nothing wrong with PVE. We're gonna go this one here. Demonic fortitude. This this goes up to twenty percent in PvP instances. It, I it was never documented it anywhere, but I just noticed. Uh, earlier, and yeah, so that's why Warlocks have so much health in PvP. It goes up to 20%, not 10%. Um, we're just gonna go, or well, I personally go the um, increasing wall because it just goes back to how wall usually was because it's 25% baseline. Dark Pact, it's very, very, very strong. Frequent Donor makes it ridiculous, 45 second cooldown, but with dampening, it doesn't last like as strong. It's very I think it's fine to use it pretty early if you're being jumped on and stuff. Um, because it's at the strongest, the earliest in the game. Um, yeah, fell synergy, just basic general stuff that keeps us alive and kicking. Synergy is really good. Um, we've just got our 10% uh, damage increase and that's that's great. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, and fell guard hits like a truck now. So, uh, when it procs on them, it's very good as well and basically just kind of work our way down to here um the leech thing i don't really know i'm still making my mind up about it you can obviously change banish out for literally anything because you know it's not needed in every instance but let's move over to the demonology tree uh this is where things get a little bit interesting right off the bat we've got dreadstalkers demon bolt soul strike demonic strength and these are Kind of our cookie cutter like obviously we're going to pick them but what i'm not doing is demonic knowledge which was also born of blood and shadowlands and you may find that surprising because it's like free demonic core procs but if we go down here to the best talent on the tree <laughs> the three dread stalkers um we get so many demonic core procs um it's just that is wrong Ignore that. I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, yeah, so we send our Dreadstalkers out, and when they die, they give us three charges, and we get so many imps now with imp gang boss and all that. It just doesn't feel like it's worth to get an extra because we're always overflowing with demonic core procs now. Um, but basically, we've got Annihilation Training, uh, Felon Steel... This, this isn't the right talent here. I'll have to fix that up. Um, this one here, and it's all a bunch of uh, damage amps for your Felguard. 
and now your fell guard it just hits so much harder essentially it's a 50 percent damage increase to your fell guard flat but demonic strength it feels like it got buffed like 300 percent because it is hitting so so much harder than it was in shadowlands it feels like much more than 50 percent um it's it's one of our biggest biggest uh abilities i guess um Carnivorous Stalkers, uh, it's essentially a 30% chance to buy it because we've got three, um, and that's pretty high. It'll almost always get at least two or three bites off now. In a Demons, we've got our Imps, you know, just so we... It, it just helps just having the Imp there. <laughs> Dread Calling, that is also one of the best talent. That's that's your, uh, your Grim Inquisitors from Shadowlands. Mixed with that one, it makes it very, very strong. Tyrant, yeah, you just take that. Um, but like this, this little part here is where things get a little, little confusing. Well, not really confusing. It's just kind of like it feels like there's only one real option. Um, and I think it's kind of going into the Pit Lord area because I'm sure you've probably seen by now the Pit Lord is very strong. Um, but. There are certain builds where we can go without that and just play more of a, like, a constant Felguard kind of playstyle. But I, that's just not what I'm personally into, and I do think that this build here can get you pretty far competitively. Obviously, I don't know too much yet. I'm probably going to make another more in-depth and well-structured guide, like, a bit into the season once I can see what, what rating I'm sort of sitting at. Um, but yeah, we're going to just take the expendables here because that is, uh, that is just a 10% flat damage increase. Um, and then I interchange Soulbound Tyrant one point and this one, just depending on, um, what I'm versing or how I'm feeling because with Nether Portal, having this just makes it a lot easier with the extra soul shards, but this is also just another 10% damage increase to pretty much... Yeah, your Dreadstalkers, your uh, Felguard, your Imps, all that. Um, but the big one here, near the portal, into Nurse Falls Edition, into Build Ants Ambition. Uh, I don't like the RNG of Nurse Falls Edition. It, I don't like that to... Like, it, it just feels a little too uh, risky. I do like high-risk, high-reward classes, but if you're just unlucky, you're just unlucky, and I don't think that's going to that translates well into like a competitive environment so but more often than not it's going to be okay you're going to get enough um but yeah uh reign of tyranny is utter garbage it does no damage um you could probably go this it's this is just what i play so pvp talents cookie cutter build you can cookie cutter with the pvp talents you can't with these it's always going to change um but this is my quote-unquote cookie cutter, but it's going to change. But essentially, we'd get rid of this, and we would just... Uh, hold up. Basically, probably spec into Fel Might. And you could throw a point into Demonic Lodge. Like, it, it's okay. Like, it it really doesn't matter too, too much in, in that instance. But you'd go Fel Obelisk, you instant Dreadstalkers, um, that one. And then if for some reason... You're versing three warriors if you're doing threes. Um, you can go gateway mastering instead. And you precognition, you just figure it like this stuff out. It's very um very unlikely that it'll change too much from this though. Uh, because fell up at Lisk, it, it's just too too worth taking. Now I'm just gonna quickly give you a quick rundown on how to like open and play in arena. In my pre I just did a previous video showcasing just a few arenas in the preseason. Um, so if you want to watch that, I can show you how to um, pull this stuff off an arena. I was playing with a Shadow Priest, so I get the power infusion with the Fell Obelisk. It's a very ideal scenario, um, but it sort of shows you how it's done. But in an ideal situation, we go into the arena, we're setting up our gateway, we're Soulburn. Yeah, we're Soulburn gate waiting. Um, then we, you know, Shadow Bolt, Soul, Soul Strike. Now, recently I've just been pretty much opening with Nether Portal because it's just a lot of damage off the bat. Um, so then I do that, that, that. You're essentially just 
trying to spend as many soul shards as you can because your pit world gets empowered. The more your soul shards you spend. Um, there we go. Pit Lord comes out. Demonic Tyrant. Demonic Strength. And then this is like. It is very, very. It's a lot of damage, okay? Like, it's, it's pretty crazy. Um. So in that time, the Pit Lord did 250k damage, and now that could rage anywhere from about 200... That was in 10 seconds. Anywhere from about 200k damage to 360k, depending on how many demons you get out, because it attacks really fast, it gets more haste buffs from from the, uh, the Soul Charge you're spending, because the, the damage buff it only goes up by a couple percent, but I think the haste one, the haste modifier is a bit more. But... Here's the thing, it's a 3 minute cooldown, and obviously not every class, like some classes have much shorter burst windows, so I'm just going to quickly go through how to match those. Um, so obviously we have Dreadstalkers, and with all these Dreadstalker amps, like this talent, um, Grim Inquisitors, the 3, and just a few, uh, there we go, that one. Basically, it, it, it just makes it a very strong ability, you know. You get 12 stacks, that, that'd be enough. And in these windows, you, you, you want to stun, Fell Obelisk, Red Stalkers, Demonic Strength. Make sure they're slowed. And make sure they're not on passive. And you're going to be matching some of that burst. It's not going to be Demonic Tyrant Pit Lord, but I will say that you can Demonic Tyrant with it, as long as you time it well, because Nether Portal being 3 minutes, Demonic Tyrant being 1.5 minutes, it's half, so you can match it to match when Nether Portal's back out. And by the time that all that whole cycle goes through, you should have everything back up. Like Grimwolf, Felguard, Demonic Strength, all that by the time Nether Portal is back up. Um, I would quickly say that Amplify Curse, um, Curse of Weakness, is worth macroing. It's a very good offensive defensive. If a Fury Warrior or a Rhett is just charging at you, popping wings or bloody wreck... I don't, I don't even know warrior terms anymore. Um, you can do that and they won't be able to crit you. Um, so it's essentially just another wall. If they're bursting and their whole thing is crit. Um, so, and considering it's a 20 second cooldown, it's just worth putting on whenever you can. And if you're specced into Shadow Flame, you can slow them and have that on it so you don't have to choose between slowing them and making them do less damage. But yeah, that was just a quick rundown on how it's going to work. So just keep that in mind that obviously this can change. It's it's a lot harder to provide like, yeah, you must go this now with the new talent trees, which I do like. It's, it's a lot better for the game. I do believe there are some imbalances with talent trees in different classes and stuff. But as far as demo goes, it's it's pretty good. Just, there are a few builds that I've tried and hasn't felt great. This is kind of what I've settled on, on what will probably get, you know, you to a decent rating, so long as you're smart about using your nether portals and making sure to CC the off-target with your fears, your slows, your stuns. Um, yeah, I will do a, another guide, probably sometime... Uh, into the season and once to see what's all meta and stuff and it'll be a much more structured and less off the dome uh, video and hopefully then we can determine on a more permanent way of playing obviously it's not going to be permanent but this was just to get you through the hard time that is the start of the season because there's going to be so many unbalanced comps broken things and it's just kind of the way of the game uh, but I do think this should get you through it just real quick I'm gonna surface back to these um, demonic inspiration and wrathful minion these are just pet amps um, which are just really good so like don't undervalue your pet your pet will do a lot of damage um, they're a lot stronger this expansion which thank God because they were so they were dying so quickly in Shadowlands it was really really hard but they're pretty pretty easy to keep alive now worst case scenario you can soul burn a health funnel which will just heal it to full and make it take reduced damage 
there's lots of small nitty-gritty things like this and I am hoping to make a more in-depth guide on how that works like much like, well like edited and stuff and giving breakdowns of comps and things like that um, but for now I just wanted to put another video out because you know I'm feeling well, you know I'm feeling inspired I'm feeling happy it's it's been a hard year um, and I, I I just want to do something that I enjoy doing and get my mind off the rough things for a bit you know so please leave a question in the comments if you have one I have a very small channel so I'll most likely be able to answer you um, and you know uh, we'll, we'll see how we go uh, best of luck to you and this to all you in the season and the solo shuffle and stuff I wish you the best uh, but as for now I'm conquest um, you can subscribe if you want to um, I just have to remind you that's all yeah, so keep it keep it breezy. Watch out for Windwalker monks. They're they're, they're flying low on the radar right now. They they but they're kind of sus. So yeah. All right, guys. Again, any questions? Just leave them below. I'll get to them. Have a good Christmas.